What's up guys, in today's video we are going to be creating sound effects inside of Roblox Studio. Let's get right into it. First things first, we are of course going to need our sound effect if we're going to be creating sound effects. So let's go over to the toolbox right here. I'm using the toolbox for the sake of the tutorial. However, if you have any sound effects of your own, I would highly recommend using those. And I will note, please be careful when using the toolbox for your sounds because some of them might be copyrighted or have other issues with them. So a lot of the time it can be safer to use your own sound effects as well. However, we're going to use the toolbox for today's tutorial. Now let's go ahead and when we open the toolbox, you'll have all your free models right here. Let's click on this drop down menu from models and change it to audio. And when you're in the audio section, um, I'm going to press this little arrow button to go over to the trending sound effects like so. And you'll have a list of sound effects that are pretty popular at the moment. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, you can always search for a specific sound effect if you're looking for something particular. Uh, right now I'm looking at this Hercules sound effect. That one seems pretty cool to me. When you click on it, it's going to be inserted into your workspace. And from there you can go ahead and copy the sound ID over here. Now that I have this selected, I'm going to right click and press copy. And then let's go ahead and open up server script service. Click on the arrow, I guess the plus icon to the right of server script service. And we're going to insert a brand new script. From here, I'm going to close out the toolbox to give our script a little bit more room. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. From here, let's create a local function. And we're going to name it play sound with parentheses on the end. And this function is going to take two parameters. The first one being the parent of the, ob well, I guess the object we want to put the sound in. So the parent of the sound. And we're going to put a comma to separate the two parameters. And our second parameter is going to be our sound ID. Now we can press enter after the parentheses and it's going to put an end to our function right here. So that all the code in between will be ran in that function. Now let's start off by creating a brand new variable for our sound effect. So we're going to say local sound will be equal to instance dot new parentheses quotation marks sound. Sound dot parent will be equal to our parent parameter that we will set later. Sound dot sound ID will be equal to sound ID, our sound ID parameter that is. And then we're going to say sound.volume will be equal to 1, just to make sure that our volume is all the way up on our sound effect. From there, let's say sound colon play with parentheses on the end. That will tell our sound effect to play when we're in the game. However, we don't want to just keep on calling this function over and over again and creating a brand new sound effect every single time. So let's drop down a few lines and we're going to go ahead and say sound dot ended colon connect function. Get rid of that last parenthesis and put new parentheses on the end. This will create a brand new function using the sound dot ended event. And once the sound has officially ended, we're going to say sound colon destroy. That's going to destroy the sound effect whenever it is done with. That way we don't just create on with multiple sound effects and we don't have multiple playing at the same time unless we would like to. Now this is all that we need in order to play our sound in that function. So let's go ahead and call the function itself. From here on we're going to play our sound function by calling it like so. And now we need to provide the parent instance that the sound is going to be parented to or inside of. You can put it inside of the player's character if you would like. You can put it inside of a part in the workplace. 
However, for me, I'm going to be using the spawn location because it's the easiest available part for me at the moment. So let's go ahead and set game dot workspace dot spawn location as the parent parameter. We're going to put a comma after that to separate our two parameters. And now we need to provide the sound ID and it is a string value. So let's go ahead and put quotation marks to create a string. And we're going to copy that asset ID that we got from earlier, the sound ID inside of our sound effect. Now this is going to go ahead and play our sound effect whenever we join the game. However, I'm going to put a wait time of about five seconds or so. That way it doesn't play immediately when we join the game and we can properly test this. Joining inside the game now, let's wait. As you can see, my sound effect just played. And if you guys didn't hear that, yes, my sound effect played. And if you followed along, then it should have played for you guys as well. Now, that's not all that I wanted to show you today. Let's say that you only had sound effects in this script. This was your script for handling the sound effect in your game, I suppose. And that's great and all, but sometimes you might need to use a different script that can be accessed by multiple other scripts in order to play your sound effects, just in case you have sound effects or objects or items that would use sound effects inside of other items, inside of other players. So let me go ahead and show you how you go about doing that. Let's go to replicated storage. That way both the client and the server can access it. And we're going to insert a module script. Inside of this module script, let's go ahead, drop down a few lines, and we're going to say function module dot play sound with parentheses. Let's go ahead and take our two parameters again as parent and sound ID. And let's drop down a line right here. Now we can go ahead and copy the same code as before right here. Let's just go ahead and copy our play sound function or I guess the contents of the function itself. And we can go ahead and paste this inside of here. I guess I put a capital S in here, so I'm going to change that to lowercase. So what this is doing is it's creating a function inside of our module script. And why this is important is that now we can go ahead and call our module script. Let's go ahead back in our original script. I'm going to create a variable for that module script. I'm going to say local sound module will be equal to require game dot replicate storage dot module script. And you can name the module script however you would like to. From there, instead of calling our play sound function like so, we would say sound module dot play sound and then we would give our same two parameters as before like so which is our game dot workspace dot spawn location as the parent instance for the sound effect and then the sound of id as well and if you press play you should see that this one will work just as well as you can see joined in the game our sound effect played just like that and I want to explain why this is important, or at least a better way of doing things than copying the play sound function amongst all of your different scripts is simply for code reusability. This makes a lot more sense for me to have this two lines of code inside of local scripts, regular scripts across my game, rather than having that big old clunky function when I can just have the one function in, inside of this module script and have it be used by any script that would need to use sound effects inside of my game, if that makes any sense. But really, that's all I wanted to show you guys in today's tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.